We're chatting this morning with Brigitte Burnett, Head of Sustainability at Nedbank. Welcome, Brigitte, and uh, tell us a little more about your decisions to align Nedbank with the 49M campaign and what the objectives might be in that regard. Nedbank's focus on energy efficiency and our energy efficiency initiatives really tie in very closely with 49M. 49M talks about individual action, but more importantly about collective action and the power of collective action, which Nedbank really does believe in. In 2010, Nedbank became a carbon neutral organization, the first financial services organization to become carbon neutral. But our philosophy has always been to reduce first and then offset later. So in other words, our focus has really been on reducing our footprint as much as possible before buying carbon credits to offset the residual. And as a bank, our carbon footprint is largely as a result of our energy consumption. So about 75% of our footprint is directly related to energy. So our focus has been to reduce our energy consumption as much as possible, a huge energy efficiency drive. The way that we've done that is to put reduction targets in people's performance scorecards, measuring how everyone contributes to the energy efficiency of the organization. And we've been able to bring about those energy efficiency behaviors through awareness creating, but also through what we do in our building. So um, energy efficient air conditioning and lighting, installing motion sensors, looking at our whole IT infrastructure to make sure that is as energy efficient as possible. So for example, last year we saved or reduced the footprint per FTE from electricity by over 6%, which is a really big amount if you think of the collective of that over some 28,000 employees. So it's really, really important um, for us to, to drive that understanding, not only within our organ organization, but outside of that as well, so that our staff and our clients also understand the imperative from both a social and environmental perspective in terms of energy efficiency. So there's obviously a very clear alignment with uh, the two organizations. And um, moving beyond that, uh, you know, beyond energy efficiency, the, the bank has been really focused on other initiatives uh, that include uh, some green funding recently with the IPPs. Is, tell us a little more about other activities that Nedbank uh, has, has going on. There have been a huge number of activities, as you say. Um, Nedbank is a leading funder of renewable energy projects now, and I think it's very important for us to be supportive of the growth of the renewable energy sector. We have, for example, also a wind-powered branch in the Western Cape, Danoon, really to also show um, how renewable energies can be mainstreamed into business life, into everyday life. We also have three Green Star rated buildings. There are 10 in the country. Um, and a lot of the focus of those buildings is really on energy efficiency. We also are a large financier of other green buildings. So there really are a number of opportunities where you can drive the understanding of energy efficiency as the largest sustainability objective throughout the organization. Even if it is in marketing, such as our solar powered um, robots that we have here in the Santon CBD, it is a very a visual means of showing how renewable energies and energy efficiency is really mu very much part of our lives today. And let's chat briefly about how you would take these wonderful initiatives and leverage them internally to staff and shareholders perhaps, but also externally to customers and suppliers. How, do, how does that work? Our approach has really been very much about getting your own house in order, so being energy efficient ourselves and then taking those learnings outside of the organization. What's really important and how we've been able to get a lot of leverage internally is through the operational savings that you get from being energy efficient. So reducing your energy bill is really quite a nice motivator and a driver internally to continue with that. And also I think it's an important lesson for clients and our suppliers to also understand you know, the economic benefits of of what seems to be an environmental or social choice. And using um, all of the opportunities that you have in terms of engaging with other stakeholders, um, engaging with staff, and just demonstrating how things are possible, I think is very important. And are there any um, new projects and, and developments in the pipe pipeline that uh, you can tell us about that are, and you know, something similar to the Glasshouse uh, project that you had recently? Mm -hmm things that uh, people can look forward to? 
We are having the uh, glass house at our atrium again in the head office and I think it's fantastic for staff to actually see what is possible in your own home and how that can save you money and really um, add to the bigger objective of being energy efficient. We are launching our third green building in Menland in Pretoria on the 3rd of July, which is in South Africa's first green precinct. So the entire area is um, green in a sense in that you have to have at least a four star rating from the Green Building Council to have a building in there. But it obviously looks at also a lot of social issues and staff well-being issues. So all of that is packaged together. So for Nedbank, although we're known as the Green Bank, it's also important for us to look at economic and social and cultural issues that tie in with that. So we're quite excited about the launch of that new building. That sounds great. And um, it remains for me to say congratulations and thanks for, for uh, providing the leadership that, that you are. And, uh, uh, good luck with the partnership with 49M and uh, with all your sustainable activities. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you very much.